Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanuka broadcast. You're about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Monday and I'd like to remind our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. Please be aware that you can access all the broadcasts at any time by visiting the Kanguka website kanguka.com or by visiting the Kanguka English channel on YouTube, or by downloading the Kanguka mobile app on your phone. Just type Kanguka, that's K-A-N-G-U-K-A. As usual every Monday, I want to take a moment to thank all those who pray for the Kanguka team. We really need your prayers and we also pray for you. Every time you pray for us, don't forget to mention the partners of Kanguka. There are men and women who contribute to the progress of this work. We wouldn't have been able to continue all these years if it weren't for partners who support us with their means. Pray for them and pray for us. If this broadcast has blessed you in any way, don't forget to mention the Kanguka team in your prayers. As usual on Mondays, I remind you about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God, even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day. And the third, it's forbidden to complain, instead we must give thanks in everything. Today I'm going to talk about the third principle, it's forbidden to complain, instead we must give thanks in everything. When we say that complaining is forbidden, someone might think, well, that's easier said than done. If you knew all the problems I have in my life, you'd understand that it's simply impossible not to complain from time to time. I completely understand that life on earth can bring many challenges and fatigue. Yes, it can be really exhausting, but I want to say that it is possible not to complain. We say that complaining is truly forbidden because complaining can make you forget what God has already done or what God is currently doing in your life. We also need to understand that God hates complaints. We will see this further. There are things you might do because you believe they aren't sinful. You don't even fight against them with determination because, to you, they aren't sins. But what you don't consider a sin might be displeasing to God. What God desires is to strengthen you when misfortune strikes. Even if you feel discouraged, which can happen to anyone, He doesn't want you to stay down, He wants to lift you up. God wants to strengthen and encourage you so that later on, you can encourage those who go through the same problems as you. God doesn't want you to waste your time complaining, but instead He wants you to tell Him that He is capable. Tell Him that if He had wanted, He would have saved you, He would have spared you from that situation, or given you what you're asking for. But since that's not the case, ask Him to help you be content with what you already have, to be satisfied with what He has already given you. When you feel like complaining, God wants you to go before Him and say, Lord, give me strength during this difficult time. Even when you don't receive what you ask for, pray and give thanks to God for what you already have, for what remains, for what He is doing today. Naturally, it's difficult not to complain, by your own strength, by your own discipline, or simply because you decided not to. That's why you need to pray, asking God for the strength to overcome this. You should always pray for everything, even for what you think you have mastered, because you already understand what needs to be done. Now, let me show you in God's word why I said that God hates complaints. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. It says, Nor complain, as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer. The verse talks about the Israelites whom God brought out of slavery in Egypt. God performed many miracles to bring them out of Egypt. He even parted the Red Sea so they could cross. He fed them with manna in the desert. But even after all that, after witnessing all these miracles, they still complained against God and against Moses. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 21 to 23, it is written, But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men who have seen my glory in the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have put me to the test now these ten times, and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. The people of Israel were on their way to the promised land that God had given them. But because of their complaints, their sins, and their failure to value all the miracles that God had performed in their lives, God said that those who complained, those who despised Him, who despised His works, who sinned in the desert, would not enter the promised land. That is why in Kanguka, we teach that complaining is forbidden. When you complain, it can close doors, just as it did for the Israelites. So from today, whether you have or don't have what you've asked for, whether He protects you today or does so tomorrow, even if you don't receive what you asked for, ask God for the strength not to complain. It's now time to continue our study of the book of Nehemiah. We started this study last Monday. If you're new to the Kanguka broadcast, I encourage you to listen to everything I've shared so far about this book. As I mentioned, 
I don't go verse by verse, which is why I ask you to read one, two, or even three chapters in advance. I asked you to read the first three chapters so that you can easily follow along when I explain. Last Friday, we focused on the second chapter and we saw how deeply Nehemiah was burdened for Jerusalem. What does this teach us today, especially in the context of the New Testament? It teaches us that we, too, should have a burden for the kingdom of God. It's true that you have your own problems, but it's crucial and beneficial to prioritize the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness first. Try to live according to God's word, walk in holiness, and pray for God's interests. Pray for the church, for God's servants, and for the souls that need to be saved. Focus on God's interests before attending to your own. This was also true for Nehemiah. In the first chapter, verse 11, we see Nehemiah's prayer. Before he approached the king, he first sought God's assistance. He asked that God's hand be upon the king before he met with him. When you need to approach someone important, whether it's for an interview, a job, or a visa, pray first and ask for God's assistance. When you pray beforehand, angels are deployed before you even meet the person. Of course, it must be God's will. Just because you pray doesn't mean it will automatically happen. But you should pray in alignment with God's will because if it is His will for you to get that job, you'll receive it in His timing. When you pray, God intervenes. Many people go to ask for a job or a visa without having prayed. That's why I always encourage you to prepare your day before you step out. It's so important to prepare your day because when a door is closed by the devil, your prayer will cause God to open that door in Jesus' name. But if it's God who has closed the door, it will remain closed. As I've already mentioned, Nehemiah received God's favor. It was the king himself who asked Nehemiah what he wanted, Nehemiah didn't have to ask. The king said, what do you want? Nehemiah then requested letters of recommendation and assistance from the person who would provide the timber needed to repair the gates of Jerusalem. The king granted him everything he asked for. But what I love most is Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 8. The verse concludes by saying, and the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. When the good hand of God is upon you, his angels are with you. The good hand of God signifies God's favor. Today, I want to focus on verses 17 and 18 from the second chapter. In verse 17, we see that when Nehemiah arrived in Jerusalem, he had the intention of convincing the people there to rebuild the wall. What's surprising is that they had been living in Jerusalem, they had seen the broken walls, they had seen the burned gates, and yet it didn't seem to bother them. They were living as if nothing was wrong. This is the same thing we see happening today. There are Christians who are indifferent to what the devil is doing in the church. We see the devil manifesting in a particular way within the church. The devil has entered the church. Pastors are fighting over money. There are Christians in the church who are behaving like people of the world. They do whatever they want. We even see men marrying men in the church. Many Christians remain silent. It doesn't bother them. Does what's happening in the church, the works of the devil within the church, move you at all? The people in Jerusalem saw that the walls were broken and the gates were burned, yet they continued living their lives as if nothing was wrong. But when Nehemiah arrived, he showed them that this was not okay. He said to them, Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be a reproach. It's as if Nehemiah opened their eyes. They were there, but they didn't see the danger. It was like they didn't recognize the disgrace that was already upon them. In verse 18, Nehemiah did everything he could to convince them. How did he convince them? He did it by sharing his testimony. Testimonies have power. Verse 18 says that he told them how the good hand of his God had been upon him. He told them how the king had shown him favor. He had God's favor. And they said, let us rise up and build. After hearing his testimony, they had faith. They were strengthened. The verse concludes by saying that they set their hands to this good work. Why did they wait for Nehemiah? There are many Christians who are waiting for you to testify so that they can have faith and courage. It was Nehemiah's testimony that convinced them. God willing, I'll continue tomorrow. Have an excellent day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773337.